Star pilots from across the galaxy, welcome back to the Sid Taker YouTube channel for a very special video as we look to unbox Wave 3 in X-Wing 2.0. And finally, it's time for the Separatists and the Galactic Republic. You are here with your Sid Taker host, James, and today I'm joined by the marvellous Matt Hill and Tom Reed. Welcome. Hi, good to be here. <laughs> good to be here as well. So we are going to be unboxing the ships. Uh, we are lucky enough to have the Sith Infiltrator today and also the Delta 7 Ether Sprite. So what we're going to try and do is show you a little bit of the ship on camera as well, because these are gorgeous miniatures, aren't they? They look so good. They look absolutely fantastic. So well done FFG on keeping that stand up nice and high. And we're also going to talk a little bit about all the pilots and upgrades that you can expect to receive in this. So without further ado, let's get ourselves started with the Delta 7 Ether Sprite. So let's have a look at the cards. What is the basic ship that we have for the Delta Ether Sprite? So first off, we've got the generic, the Jedi Knight. Um, going across the uh, the stats to start with, we've got the two red dice, the three evade, three hull, a shield, and uh, a generic with a force. Single force point for this guy. Um, the actions, as most of us have already seen, we've got the the introduction of the force evade, the uh, the purple action to get this actual uh, new new theme going, and then we've just got focus, target lock, barrel roll, boost. So pretty manoeuvrable, nippy little thing. It's uh, it's going to get all over the place. So what are the standout things about this uh, this ship, Matt? When I, you look at this ship, I think the the obvious one is the the use of the force. It's the first ship in the game to only be piloted by force users, so everybody's going to take that at least one force point, uh, which is obviously giving you access to that purple of age, which is a really interesting new mechanic. Um, for those that don't know, you spend a force point to be given access to that evade action, um, which is going to come in handy, uh, especially on the high initiative pilots, where you've got multiple force points to mod your dice with. Um, you can also, therefore, evade that. that little blank that's going to sneak in every now and again. It's going to give you a lot of flexibility in what you want to do with your dice. Absolutely. Uh, and what do we think about the shipability itself, with the ability to use that through force point? I think it's it just makes it stand out as a proper nimble dogfighter. It's a constant ability to be able to reposition, um, react to what your opponent's done, and and try and make the most out of it. I think it's almost unparalleled in its ability to punish or to reward a fantastic move. You get back to where you want to be um, or you get away from where you don't want to be. And I don't think there's anything else across the game at the moment that's going to reward you in quite the same way. I think the ability itself, um, as Matt has said, with force everywhere, you've always got the option of that push the limit, which... You know, we all knew how powerful that used to be. Yeah, absolutely. It, it gives you sort of an almost unparalleled level of flexibility with where this ship could end up um, pre and post manoeuvre. You, you know, you've got a fantastically manoeuvrable dial, and on top of that, you can then take the double repositions if you want to. Um, which we all know that's a fantastic way of getting in or out of position. Yeah, and when you look at that dial, it kind of suggests straight away it wants to be in there. It wants to be dog fine. It wants to be in the mix, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got brilliant slow manoeuvres so things that we all look for that one turn pretty deadly um, it's got a two I think it's highlighted the speed of it there's no three turn so it's not going to get back out of dodge very quick however the ability to dogfight um, which we will highlight later with some of the upgrades is um, unparalleled I think one turn a two sloop um, yeah, it's going to be in the mix, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's very clear to me it wants to get stuck into the middle of the fight and then swing its way around unpredictably once it's up in that, uh, that melee in the middle of the board. Yeah, get in the fight, stay in the fight, and uh, be unpredictable when it's there. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, our generic pilot is also initiative three. Yes. You know, it's a good starting point, isn't it, even as a generic? A yeah. good starting point. So where do we go to next after the Jedi Knight? What, what's our next pilot in the hierarchy? So we're going into Ahsoka Tano. The ability we gain is uh, after you ex fully execute a manoeuvre, you may choose a friendly ship at zero to one and spend one force. That ship may perform an action even if it is stressed. That's absolutely fantastic. She's got two force points, hasn't Two she? force points as well. So um, you know, you're going to be able to use this ability regularly 
and bring some extra power to the generics you've brought with you. Um, my initial reaction to the the faction in a whole is that you either go a full range of Jedi uh, Force users, or you bring one of these guys and a whole load of a load of clone troopers and a whole load yeah. of clones. Yeah. Um, and I think some of these abilities are obviously geared towards making those other pilots that you've brought with you, the non-force users, more powerful. Um, the picture, I think, for this pilot does that justice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, she's going to work really well with a swarm of other ships because she's got essentially super coordinate. Yes. Um, yeah, even while stressed, you can start passing out those actions, those key repositions to get your ships where you want them to be. And loads of people love Ahsoka Tano. You know, they love her from Rebels, they love her from the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah she's um, a real fan favourite. She is a fan favourite. She's a fan favourite. And, and lots of people were asking, where is Ahsoka when we received the conversion kits, of yeah. course. And, yeah. And here she is. So I think she's going to be very popular. Initiative 3, do we think that's going to really affect how she, how she plays? No, I think for her strength. I think for what you're bringing her to the game for, her initiative isn't overly important. I think her ability to make other things more powerful yeah. is the reason that she's coming along rather than herself being a humane power piece. Yeah. I don't see that. I see it more as a case of she's going to enable those generics, those swarm type ideas that you've bought to just get the job done, whether it be double modded attacks or getting out of dodge as Matt said, you know, yeah. with the crucial Crucial repositioning. Yeah. Um, or she can hit those high PS, uh, sorry, high initiative Jedi pilots as well, get them repositioned before they take their manoeuvres. That's just really incredibly really. handy. Yeah, she's definitely going to be a real support piece in uh, in these lists going forwards. So we move up again in the initiative, and initiative four we have. We have uh, Barris Offi, uh, who is the conflicted Padawan. While a friendly ship at range zero to two performs an attack, if the defender is in its bullseye arc, you may spend a force to change a focus result to a hit result, or a hit result to a crit result. Interesting. Now, I guess with all the repositioning of this type of ship, the bullseye arc isn't going to be the most difficult to achieve. Even though we found with x 2.0, of course, getting some of those uh, those bullseyes on particular types of ships has been a little bit more difficult. Uh, but the maneuverability of these ships, are we going to see that triggered much? I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. the only thing so far that has reliably triggered these type of abilities is Sun Tier Fell. Yeah. And at, so far, the only ship that has reliably had double reposition. I think it's a key theme you start to see across the Jedi pilots and the associated upgrades as well. There's a lot of things that are triggering in that bullseye arc. Yeah. Um, and that ability to just whip around the board and point it where you want it is going to be really crucial. Yeah, these guys are really going to make the most of precision flying, which you'd expect them to. Absolutely. And what kind of place are we, do we think we're going to see Baris in a uh, in one of these clone trooper lists? I think she falls into the clone troop tr clone trooper list more so than the the spamming of the Jedi. Personally, yep. uh, I think she's going to help other people attack. I, I think we're jumping the gun slightly, but we're going to find a really good partnership uh, in the next pilot we're going to cover as well, which is um, Lu Luminara and Dooley, who is absolutely the right choice to partner with Barris for those that really are into the, uh, the Clone Wars background, as they were Mentor and Padawan, which is a, a really nice move on FFG's part to put them together like that. Yeah, I think so. So let's have a little look at the ability of this one. So what do we have there, Tom? We've got while a friendly ship at range 0 to 2 defends, if it is not in the attacker's bullseye arc, you may spend a force. If you do, change one crit result to a hit result, or one hit result to a focus result. That seems very good. It's almost the direct opposite it of the, is, uh, isn't it? the previous pilot. Let's get that up so everybody can see that. So I think for me those two are going to make a really fun pair. Um, just getting absolutely the most use out of those force points and those bullseye arcs. Yeah, and this one actually has two force points as well, compared to Baris, who's got the one. Yeah. Um, so maybe a natural partnership there with those two ships. Yeah, I think you can part them together to um, give yourself the flexibility offensively or defensively, or you pair one of them with a bunch of clones, Yeah. and you then either buff offensively or defensively with what will probably be a mini swarm type setup. Um, I don't think you're going to get enough value out of both of them, and clones? No, I think you'd be looking at two to three Jedi fighters together yes. at that point. Yeah, I agree entirely. Uh, otherwise, you go one of these pilots with a bunch of clones and you try and buff them to either do a bit more damage or just live a little bit longer. Now, of course, at this point, we're not, we don't have the points, do we? No, so we everything don't. we do say should be 
Caveat to the Ghent. We should put a bit of a caveat on this. You know, if this time it turns up and it's uh, you know it's hundred points per ship, and we're talking about it being good, then uh, then maybe it's not worth that. But potentially a little bit of a combination there with that one. Um, so I guess the one that everybody uh, has been looking forward to. I know that you've been excited about this one, Tom. Yeah, it's super got. excited. It's why it's uh, already on the base plate. We have been waiting. Uh, too long, and, uh, Anakin Skywalker. If there's anybody not looking forward to this, you're wrong. Go home and reconsider your life. Um, after you fully execute a manoeuvre, if there is an enemy ship in your arc at range 0 to 1, or in your bullseye arc, and that does not specify a range, you may spend one force to remove one stress. Something that we've spoken about as a group yeah. is... The timing is the same as the fine-tuned controls and therefore we can't see any reason why these can't trigger in whichever order you feel is most beneficial. He's going to be able to drop st stress, he's going to be able to reposition, he's just going to be able to arc dodge and f knife fight better than anyone we've seen so far I think. Yeah, he's going to be superb, especially when moving second. Uh, he's going to be all across the board in any way you want him to be. So you've so, got a key point there, moving second. Yes. Yeah. So how's this going to affect the game going forwards? Uh, Are we we're going all to playing with 180 points yeah. now basically, aren't we? I think so. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's just so vital for him to go second. Um, unfortunately, that obviously that brings up the, the interesting idea of if people just ignore the faction and play something else, they still spend 200 points. Yep. They could still just outvalue you all the time. Um, however, the top blokes around that have, you know, have cut their teeth flying the aces before, they're just going to have a world absolutely. Yeah, where do we rank Anakin in terms of aces that we've seen in X-Wing so far? Both in 1.0 and 2.0. Um, I think he's the 2.0 ace. I think, so. I think if you can fly aces well, you're going to be able to get more than your, your money's worth out of Anakin. Uh, but he is going to take that level of skill. Yeah, if you I get mean, him in the wrong place, yeah. he's going to start to struggle. How many points then are we thinking for this guy? Um, what are we guessing here? I've got to see this guy coming in at over a third of your list. Okay, yeah. So yeah. kitted out, I would suspect somewhere between... 75 and 90? Yes, yeah, so we're looking at defender kind yeah. of prices. I think, I think we're talking just sub 400 points. Yeah. Yep. 80 to 100 wouldn't surprise me. Well, he's got all the tricks. Yeah. And obviously, you could probably take a, stream, a streamlined version where he's not got quite so much toys on him. Yeah. But I think he's going to really benefit from having all the little gizmos and that's really upgrades that we're going to look at. I think our feeling is that you get three Jedi if you if you really want. Yeah. Um, but I suspect if you the other route you go is you go two. Yeah. You're I, think you go, I think you go away with two of the they're really high PS guys, all the tools, and they're they're still going to put up a really good fight. Yeah. I reckon that we might see a situation where you effectively have like a, a almost like a hundred point Anakin there, where you've got maybe Ahsoka who would probably fit in with him. Yeah, I think she's, she's going to go really well with him, which again yeah. is nicely thematic. Because the yeah. one thing I'm going to want to do to block your Anakin is uh, block him in place, Absolutely. cost him his action, stop him manoeuvring around the board quite so easily. Whereas the Soaker's going to let you take those actions early and yeah. get him out of the way. I mean, it's really fun. Once he goes to and like one of the cheap ship, I imagine. Yeah. Well, on that note, is this the natural home for supernatural reflexes? Even at 36 points. Since you're talking all your eggs in one basket, <laughs> you're going to get a lot of eggs in there now. Yeah, yeah that's very, it's a, very true. It's a big basket. It certainly um, is. But I think if you go Supernatural, the title that we will cover shortly, you, you're comfortably over 100 point Anakin. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So just based on these pilots alone, the ship, what we've seen so far, not even looking at the upgrades and theorising that, the dial, is this the ship that gets you excited? Uh, no question. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Now traditionally, you know, ace style list isn't something that has got you excited. Is it? No, I mean traditionally I would have definitely gone more the route of one Jedi and a bunch of the clones to go with it. Um however, I think he's good enough that I have to learn to fly an ace. Okay. I think he's that good. Um I've played X Wing for years and nothing has has dragged me towards the ace yet. But I think this might be the one. Um, yeah, me and Anakin might have a long and happy relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it remains to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully at some point we're going to be getting an opportunity to obviously see these on the table and get get a game for, for our viewers out there, which would be good. How about yourself? I'm 
very, very looking forward to Anakin. Uh, now, do you have any of this background? To... Yeah, I've cut my teeth flying aces, um, going back to the old um, Palp Aces builds, right back in sort of wave six. Um, so I've, yeah, I'm used to Vader, I'm used to Sintifal, and this guy feels like both of them on steroids. He's going to be so much fun. You try catching my Anakin, it'll be great. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I would like to add on that note, traditionally, um, the aces have struggled to do damage. Mm -hmm. So you weren't always rewarded for when you did outposition someone. But this is an ace that brings force and it brings target lock. You get yourself in the right spot, he's going to hurt you. And I think that's the advantage over some of the things we've seen previously. Yeah. Absolutely, it very much feels like a ship that's all about being in the right spot. No, everything, everything no, about absolutely. this ship, everything about this ship is about being in the uh, in the right spot. I think flying the, the Jedi is going to really separate the skilled players. Um, yeah. you, you're going to have to get it right, but when you do get it right, they're going to punish your opponent. Excellent. So exciting for all of you ace players out there. So let's see what kind of things we can put with them uh, and what comes with the pack. So we've got the upgrades here and there are plenty of upgrades uh, that come with the Delta 7 Ether Sprite, um, some of which we've seen before. So let's run through some of those, but at least then you guys know that you can pick these up in the pack. Uh, so let's start off first of all with the title itself, which is the uh, Delta 7B, which we've got there. So you guys can see. So you want to talk a little bit about that one? Yeah, so the title that I think many of us are aware of it um, makes the ship a bit more a, a bit more of a, a tank. Um, gives you two extra shields, however, reduces you a green dice and gives you a red dice. So you're going to hit pretty hard. Brings you much closer to the T65 X-wing in stats. Yes, um, that will put you at three shields, three hull, three red, two green. So I think it's going to reward people who, as you were saying earlier, are constantly in the right place. Yeah. The less you have to call on those green dice, the more you want to take the Delta 7B. Um, however, the chance of your, your Super Ace just popping at two green dice is arguably too high. Um, you, you've got to get that positioning right. You can only afford to take maybe one shot per turn at yeah. the most. You've, you've got the hull and you've got the shields to start taking a little bit here and there, but you can't risk being out of position. No, I think it's... Um, it's not going to be very forgiving. Do you um, think there's a natural partner for that, having looked at the pilots that we've seen so far? or I think, to be honest, it could go across the board. Yeah. Um, I think giving any of them the third red dice is a massive bonus. Yeah. Um, if you're super confident with Anakin and you're going to put him in the right place all the time... He feels like the one I'd take it on first. Yeah, absolutely. The third you red want dice. it to be the guy who's not getting shot. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then you've also got the bit of resilience. If he does get shot, you know, the extra shields are going to be a bit useful, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, so that's the first one. What have we got next? So we've got calibrated laser targeting. Uh, this is something I'm quite excited about. This actually takes up two upgrade slots. It takes your mod and your title slot. Well, so it's pretty greedy. So quite yeah. A, quite a greedy upgrade. Um, but the ability itself, when you perform a primary attack, if the defender is in your bullseye, add one focus result. Oh, wow. And having just read that out loud, it's better than I thought it was. For some reason, I was placing my own range restriction on it, the bullseye arc. However, it's anywhere. So you're buying that red dice because logically you've probably got a force to turn that focus into it. Yeah. Yep. You're not losing the green dice. And, you, and you're not getting yourself the two shields, but one green dice over the course of a game is probably more worth more than the two shields. Um, I think this is fantastic. Yeah, I think again, it's, it's going to reward that really precise flying. Yes. If, you, if you know you can get the most out of that bullseye arc, you're going to get a lot of value out of it. Yeah, I think um, this is my upgrade of choice, I think. Oh, wow, really? So, I mean, because of the fact it takes a couple, we're going to have to see what is going to lose out as a result. So what kind of things are we not going to see for bringing this particular one? Well, this isn't a, li a limited... Uh, no, anyone. Anyone. Can yeah. Ask, can't yeah. So, obviously it's a choice between the two titles. Um, however, this, this one is also going to mean you'd lose access to any mod. So, no stealth. No stealth and no um, afterburners, which do you think is going to be a fun one to try on these? Yeah. So yeah. So, um, one that you think would be worth it in the balance and act, in theory, or not? I'm definitely wanting to give it a try. Uh, I think it's going to be worth playing about with. See what you can get out of it. Yeah. 
And it, again, it feels like one of those that's going to reward some really good flying. Yeah. That seems to be the theme for the, the Jedi overall. Absolutely. As is completely right for the Jedi. Absolutely. I think there's enough repositioning built into the ship's kit yeah. that you could get away with no afterburners. I think you could. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. So there we go. That is the calibrated laser targeting, which brings on to our first force power. It's one that we've, uh, with lots of people, been able to see for a little while. It's brilliant evasion. What do we think of brilliant evasion? The brilliant evasion is uh, while you defend, if you are not in the attacker's bullseye arc, you can spend a force to change two of your focus results into evade results. It's just giving you that extra value for your force points. I think that that is fantastic on yeah. the ships. I'm a massive oh, fan. Absolutely. I really like it. I think fantastic. that's going to be particularly really fun on the, the low PS Gen I, where you've only got that one point anyway, but now you can get double value out of it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think, um, as we've highlighted all the way through the video, it's all about positioning, and you're rewarded for getting in your own bullseye arc, but this also lets you get out of, the, of your opponents yeah. um, and get loads of value out of your force. Yeah. Um, I think anyone who, like you say, standard one force point doubles its value. However, I think anyone who's bringing two or more force as well, this could keep you alive for an awful lot longer than than many other things out there. Yeah, it's it's always, actually trigger it repeatedly, which is going to be really useful. Um, yeah, I think if you take Brilliant Invasion, you throw a stealth device on. Yeah, the more dice you've got, the more you're going to roll those double focus results, yeah. which is the only real limit I see on that card is... You've got to wait for those two results in order for it to be worth anything. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think you. you it's very similar to, uh, I guess, uh, Ezra's ability in some ways, isn't it? In terms of spending a force. <clears throat> yeah. To change two results to the success results, um, except of course you're not having to be stressed as a result. I'm going to go on board and say I'm a little less convinced by this in the sense that it feels to me like it's rewarding you for not flying your ship quite so well because. Does the Jedi feel to me like one that you want to be keeping out of the way that don't get shot, they're so good at positioning, mm -hmm. that you want to minimise the amount of shots, and you, you're looking at something here that says you're getting shot a lot. Yeah. Like yeah. The more you get shot, the more you're triggering it. You don't want to be in that position to begin with. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, that's a fair point. I think the only thing it will benefit you is, because it's only bullseye, um, it's going to protect you when you maybe when you're out at range three. Yeah. Huge arcs to dodge, yeah. but you've only got to dodge a small bullseye arc to get the benefit. Those big wide turreted ships that are yeah. sort of battleshipping around the board and the like. And oh, there's, there's certainly room for it. Absolutely. But in general, I agree. You you want to fly this thing not to get shot at. Yeah. Not not to get shot at in people's bullseye arc. So. Brilliant. Okay, so we move on to our next one, and that is battle meditation. So another force. Yeah. While you perform a purple. Coordinate action, you may coordinate one additional friendly non limited ship of the same type. Both ships must perform the same action. Um, as we mentioned earlier, I can see builds where it's one Jedi, a whole bunch of clones, um, and this is, just gives you extra value out of that. Um, coordinate, drop two focuses onto some of those things near the front, let them r run forward and target lock, yeah. really try and hit stuff hard. Um, yeah, I think double modded shots has been something that is harder and harder to get. Um, Obviously we don't know the slots that the clones are going to have available on their ships, but I could really see this working with munitions carriers. Yeah. Getting yeah, big torpedo shots, double yeah, modded. I agree entirely. Fantastic. So one that we like there. Uh, and that brings us on to the next one, where we actually start talking about some of the droids that come with uh, this ship. So we will get an R3 astromech in the pack. Yeah. However, we have seen it before, we won't waste your time no, absolutely on not. going through that. Um, R4P Astromech. Before you execute a basic manoeuvre, you may spend a charge. If you do, while you execute manoeuvre, reduce its difficulty with two charges. It's really that nice. That is fantastic. It's really good. It's um, we've good. all seen how popular Princess Leia has been recently with the uh, reduction in difficulty. Now, assuming the points make him sensible, I can't see a reason you don't want this guy. He's really fun. Yeah. I'm very interested to see how many points this is going to come to. Yeah, I suspect more than the two that Leia costs. I would hope I so. suspect. <laughs> I suspect, but I imagine that we're not going to see Leia at those points forever. No, no, I agree. And two sloop on the Jedi Starfighters that becomes white, I think, is phenomenal. That's going to be really fun. Yeah, and it's going to happen at those key moments in the game, which is the difference between winning and losing. 
Yeah, you know, entirely. And he's not a unique droid, so you could, in theory, be equipping every Jedi with this guy. And it's a similar kind of conversation that we've had when we've spoken about, I guess, the BB units uh, with resistance before, you know, with the charges. How many yeah. times in the game is that going to, uh, you know, come up versus maybe taking uh, the R4 Astromech, for example. Um, but it's those couple of times that it does come off, those two charges and those key moments yeah. in the game where you can just spin things around, change things around, and you're in a great position. Yeah, yeah. And you're looking at being able to okay, turn or sloop and double reposition in the same turn with no penalty. It's yeah. just really fun. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really good. These guys are going to be very, very, very tough to pin down. Yeah, no question. Yeah, I, I'm, I imagine we're going to see quite a lot of that, but I am interested in the points. Do you rethink that it's going to be another one of those upgrades that is scaled with the initiative, like we've seen with the BB units, for example? So it will cost more on an Anakin than it would an Ahsoka? I think there's, there is the potential for it. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it just remains as a flat mm -hmm. ability. Um, but I guess it is more powerful the higher you go up that initiative curve. So um, I, could, I could see it going that way. Yeah, I could see it going that way indeed. Uh, so I think that brings us to the end of talking about the Delta 7 Ethersprite. We really like the ship, love the look of the ship as well. It's very different from a lot of the things that we've seen so far. Very, very small, very slick. Yeah. Um, you know, it almost looks like it doesn't fit in. Yeah. In, in some ways, I don't know. I don't know if that makes. It looks like it's scaled for a very, very different game. <laughs> yes. Um, but a really gorgeous little model, uh, and certainly looking forward to seeing it on the table, flying by somebody who is good at flying it. Because yeah. I, <laughs> I think otherwise these guys are going to go pop. Yeah, I think yeah. over the next six weeks we're going to look at a lot of sad people as their hundred point Anakin disappears into the <laughs> dust without really achieving a lot. But at the same time, I think we're going to see how they can take over some games. I think he's, with the right people behind him, he's going to go a long way. And yeah. I definitely think you're going to start seeing him at the top tables of tournaments, assuming he's not pointed into a stupid place. Yeah, so I think it's a dark question, uh, which pilot are you most excited about? Because I think we've already answered yeah, that. Yeah, I think for me it's Anakin Skywalker. Got to be. Anakin Skywalker. And in terms of the upgrades, what are your standouts there? What are the ones that you think we're going to see an awful lot of? See, for me it's calibrated laser targeting. Um, I think buying that extra attack dice is so powerful, um, and for me that wins. Yep, and how about for yourself Matt? I'm, I'm tempted to go the other way, I'm tempted to give them the uh, Delta 7, Okay. Um, and then possibly the R4P as well, Okay. Um, possibly even look at um, Supernatural Reflexes, get yeah. every inch of manoeuvrability out of that ship that I possibly can, and really leverage that extra dice. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs>
and for actions you get the option to focus or target lock and conveniently you also get a red barrel roll. Very interesting. You were talking about before that red barrel roll on this big bay ship is very interesting. Yeah, it opens up a lot of options. Um, it's an awfully long way, a three bank barrel roll. Um, can make it a reasonable block. It, there are also things we will cover on to let you take actions out of sequence, actions in combat, and a barrel roll at that point is pretty tasty as well. Definitely. Yeah, and it seems very much like a meaty, forgiving ship. What kind of dial does it have? Let's have a little look, a look at the dial. So if you want to pick that over, what we think in the moment we see that? So I think for myself, when I look at big bases, the first thing I check, I've got white turns. That's, that can be a killer. Uh, we've got those white turns and we go a bit further than that as well. Um, we've got some blues with the one and two banks, which is nice. The three forward, which is, which is blue as well. We've got two sloops on a large base, which is pretty exciting. That's going to be fun. Yeah, and a, and a five sloop as well. It's reasonably quick. It can do quite a lot of work, I think. Um, overall, I'd say it's a, it's a decent dial. I'm quite liking the fact you've got a 5k turn on there as well. That covers a hell of a lot of distance to get you out of dodge, but still keep you in, involved in the action. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree, I like all know that's fun on the, on the Ghost. Yeah. It's a packed out dial. There's a lot of versatility lot of there. Yeah. A lot of versatility yeah. on this big ship. Um, so going up from the Initiative 2 pilot, uh, Initiative 3 we have... So we have 066. Um, we drop onto a calculate instead of a focus with it being a droid. We keep the target lock and we've got the red barrel roll. The ability is after you defend, you may spend one calculate token to perform an action. So as we just covered off, in combat barrel roll is a potential, or even dropping your calculate off that you didn't need in defence and acquiring yourself a target lock for offence. Yeah, which is really powerful, yeah. I think. Gives you a lot of options to play with. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll hold that one up for you guys while we go on to another initiative three and somebody that everybody will remember from the movies, which is of course Count Dooku. One of my favourite characters, and Christopher Lee being a fantastic actor, of course. Yes, absolutely. It's really fun to be able to play him in the game now. Absolutely. So what's his ability? Well, being a Jedi, he comes with three force points on right. top of what we've already talked about. Um, he's obviously a Sith master, well, apprentice, but very powerful Sith. Um, after you defend, if the attacker is in your firing arc, you may spend a force to remove one of your blue or red tokens. And after you perform an attack that hits, you may spend a force to perform an action. Oh, okay, so how are we going to see this play out in the game? Well, this is just options. Yeah. Options are good, um, and he gets loads of them. Um, the ability to drop some locks off you, potentially. Yeah. Um, you can then do extra things when you when you hit someone. Um, again, we've got that combat roll, combat phase barrel roll, which super powerful. Um, something we'll cover off later, but the um, the title's going to let you cloak. Yeah, um, and that's going to be huge in combination. I think. With yeah, I think there's going to be options around yeah. um, cloaking, barrel rolling, um, reducing your ability to get hurt. When you've got one agility, that's pretty important. I think the fun part for me is that you've got multiple force points and there's no limit on how often you contribute these as well. So you could theoretically um, be shot multiple times, take that red barrel roll and a red cloak and spend your stress, um, giving you so many options of where you can be, what you can take. Do we think this is going to be a popular pilot that we're going to see quite a lot of? I think we're going to see a lot of them. Yeah. I think the only downside to him at all is that he's initiative three, which is neither here nor there on the scale, but I don't see that being a major problem overall. Okay, and then that brings us, of course, to the big daddy himself. It's Darth Maul. So I think a lot of people got excited about this when this was spoiled. Yeah, initiative five, which is, um, which is decent. Again, three force points. After you perform an attack, you may spend two force to perform a bonus primary attack against a different target. If your attack missed, you may perform that bonus primary attack against the same target instead. Wow. Really good ability. Yeah. Um, fantastic if there's other low agility stuff out there. You can pump a whole load of damage into stuff. I think it, something that goes back to Gunner in 1.0 though, the top blokes are just going to let you take one damage fairly often. They're going to manipulate the, the hits so they're not going to spend all of their tokens and then let you pump them full of dice again. So a little bit careful on how, how highly we rate the ability. But I think if there's one agility stuff out there and you can perform it 
against multiple targets. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty powerful. I think there's still ground at the moment where we're seeing much more of the swarm to play come back into the game as well. Because these, these guys are going to be hyperspace illegal where you're finding a lot more swarm play. Yeah. And that's fine. If you want to put one damage out there, one damage out there, it, it's not ideal, but it's more damage that you could be doing. Yeah, it's and those swarms are going to run out much more quickly. Yeah, I agree entirely. So what kind of things are we going to see coming alongside the likes of the Darth Maul and the Count Dooku and the ship in general? What, what kind of builds of lists are we going to see? So I think we're going to see this be a fairly heavy hitting support ship. Support ship might be the wrong word because it's going to do a fair bit itself. However, you're going to need three or four ships alongside it, I think, to get the most out of it. And I yeah. think we're going to see a lot of cheap mini swarms accompanying these infiltrators. I think as you go through the upgrades, you start to see a trend towards uh, support-based crew um, and other similar options like the, the probe droid that we're going to cover in a, a couple of minutes, um, where you, you want to be building up to give those other ships, the, the vulture droids and so on, the abilities to really start to mess with your opponent. Um, this guy's going to be sat at the centre, as a good Sith should be, just throwing out those problems for you to deal with. And I guess that's been supported, of course, by FFG's official video that showed off the match report. Uh, between the Separatists and the Republic, yeah, yeah, um, where we did see one of these big ships here being supported by lots of the Vulture droids, lots of the smaller, more swarm-based ships. Yeah, definitely. Um, so perhaps something we're going to see going forward. Okay, so now we're coming to something which has been really interesting in design space. So something completely different that we've not seen in X-wing 1.0 and 2.0, and that's the concept of, of course, these probe droids. So let's talk a little bit about those. So we've got an Initiative Zero. We've got when a friendly ship locks an object or jams an enemy ship, it may measure range from you. After an enemy ship overlaps you, that ship rolls one attack dice. On a focus result, you suffer one damage. Bear in mind, you have one hull. And in the systems phase, you may relocate using a two bank, a two straight, or a two. You have to edit that because that's obviously a fucking bank the other way. <laughs> Yeah, just say two straight up two. So at, at your initiative, you may relocate using a two bank or a two forward template. Now that is a very very interesting step in a particular direction, isn't it? That's the uh, there's the token now for us. How are you going to see this on the table? You've got so many options of where that thing can go because obviously you locate the templates into any of the little nubs around the edge, so you can go in any direction you want to at a two speed, so you can be really manoeuvrable around the board. Uh, as long as you don't get run over, you've got no problems, and you're going to force the opponent to make some really horrible choices. Do you waste your firepower into a three agility remote, which may not achieve much depending on what you're throwing at it, or do you leave it there causing jams, target locks, and just really starting to mess with your game? Yeah, I think jam is that big one. Being able yeah. to measure from that to jam someone yeah. is, um, is potentially quite um, influential. Yeah, I would say so. Um, do we see? Do we think we're going to see quite a few of these on the table? What kind of points are we going to, are we looking at for a probe droid? I don't th think they'll be that expensive. Um, I just think there's going to be better places to spend your points. Probably, I'm not sure we'll see that many. Um, while they look quite cool, I think. Um, oh, more guns! Yeah. I do think that jam. However, I mean it's it's quite an underrated. Um, I guess new thing in 2.0. I haven't experienced it myself at the uh, the hyperspace trial over the weekend. You know, it can really catch you off guard and upset yeah, all of your opponents. I'm going to these are going to be really fun um, as long as the points allows them to not be too expensive. I yeah. could see just dropping a couple of these into a list just to chip them out into a game and go, go on, you deal with that while I'm getting on with killing you. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot to be said for doing that. It, it feels very Sith to just be forcing those horrible choices. I'm going to put you in a bad spot, whatever you do. You're either going to waste your firepower or you're going to let me pull off all these horrible tricks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that brings us, of course, to the title card itself. So the Sith Infiltrator that we know and love is, of course, the Scimitar. Yeah, after you place forces, you may cloak. I mean, that's a, that's a good start. Good after you start. decloak... You may choose an enemy ship in your bullseye art. If you do, it gains a jam token. You gain a cloak action and you gain jam. I yeah. think there's just this is just good all, yeah. ac all yeah. across the board. It is worth saying it's a red cloak action, so it's not the most flexible, but just having that on board is giving this ship so much, uh, again, problems to cause for your opponent. Where am I going to be? What am I going to do? 
try guessing me. Yeah, and I think we've covered some of the pilots earlier. The interaction between the two, between being able to do um, combat phase actions, is just going to link so powerfully into the the title ability. Yeah, and don't forget that cloak is a blue token, so Duke can throw it out the window as part of his pilot ability scene and go, I'm not cloaked anymore, what are you going to do about it? I've shot you. Yeah. yeah. Completely unexpected. And that's probably going to be the combination where we're going to see this title the most. I think, I so. think so too, yeah. 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 Okie dokie. Uh, so let's give you guys a little bit of a look at Scimitar. Whilst we talk about the, well, that's a new symbol, isn't it? That's a new symbol there. What's that? Yeah, that's one of the new uh, tactical relay upgrades, uh, which is a, a new class of the, the tactical droids that the separatists were famed for making use of. Uh, it also comes with another keyword that we haven't seen in the game yet, which is solitary, uh, and you can only have one card with the solitary tag in your whole list. Uh, which, which locks down some of these really silly combinations that these guys could be passing out. Okay, so what does K2B4 do? Uh, he gives you, while a friendly ship at range 0 to 3 defends, it can spend a calculate token, and if it does, add an evade result unless the attacker chooses to gain a strain token. Okay, so probably a good idea for those guys out there that aren't aware how the new mechanic of strain works. What is strain? So strain is going to reduce the number of evade dice you roll. Once you've done that one time, you're going to discard that token. So it's a mini tractor beam. You get one negative, but then you get your, your full set of evades back. So I think a fairly reasonable trade. Um, makes me live a bit longer, or makes you a little bit easier to hit. Yeah. Um, not bad, but not stand out, I don't think. Yeah, uh, cheap enough, it's going to be worth some fun. Yeah. Um, he's nice, he's not amazing. And of course another, another place where we've seen something that hasn't happened hugely in 2.0 where you can actually add an evade result. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's, it's seeing something else in that design space which is obviously interesting. Um, speaking of interesting, we've got our first crew card here and it's the, it's the big baddie. Yeah, Chancellor Palpatine. So worth noting it's a dual sided upgrade. Um, we set it this side up. After you defend, if the attacker is in is at range 0 to 2, you may spend a force. If you do, the attacker gains a stress token. Powerful. Um, I think a lot of other similar abilities work when the attacker isn't stressed. The ability to now double stress something is really, really strong. Um, it's worth noting it also increases your force by 1 and gives you a force, a purple coordinate. Yeah, I think that's going to be fun. We're seeing so often how powerful coordinate can be in the right circumstances. Uh, it's just adding yet more flexibility. And again, he's not just part of the Separatists, he's also available to the Republic players because he was their Chancellor. Absolutely, but and of course you flip that card. We get Darth Sidious. So after you perform a purple coordinate action, the ship you coordinate gains one stress token, then it gains one focus or recovers a force. Oh, I think this is really good. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, two for one on actions, even with yeah. the stress, is generally pretty powerful. Yeah, I think you, know, you make that trade in at that point, don't you? And you're quite happy to take that to do that. Yeah, uh, especially if you can put him alongside the Jedi fighters as well and uh, really get the most out of their force points. Their, their dial is nice enough that you can shed that stress relatively well. Do you think Chancellor Palpatine is someone that we're going to see a lot of play of, that ability? Of course, I mean, like everything, but this even more so, I think he's quite points restrictive. I think. Yeah. This guy could be quite expensive. Um, however, you know, we've seen some pretty powerful upgrades still get a lot of play, so I think we will see him. I think he's going to cost a decent chunk of points, but I would play him as long as he doesn't get ridiculous because the ability to just pass all that around and then if you get that timing right on when you reveal Darth Sidious instead, you can really get a lot of mileage out of him. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Now, this guy has received a lot of attention on the internet, and that is, of course, the Count Dooku again, uh, but this time it's the crew card, isn't it? So what does he do? Uh, Count Dooku is before a ship that range 0 to 2 rolls attack or defence dice. If all of your force charges are active, you must spend a force charge and name a result. And if that roll does not contain a named result, the ship must change a dice to that result, and he also gives you the traditional plus one force point. Yeah, so I think um, something that we mentioned before we came on air is putting him on a ship where this is your only force point mm -hmm. um, makes him 
better probably yeah so that you've got just this one force point to worry about it recharges every turn it recharges each turn and i get well i can blank your dice and that's always pretty powerful in my eyes and getting to hit the things that you can't hit yeah, push that extra crit damage through yeah i think it's um it reminds me very much of um ever power team from version one yeah he's i think he's really powerful i think he's going to be um I think the hype is real. Yeah, he's going to be, he's going to be the standout yeah. option from this, I think. Yeah. And as such, where do we think he's going to fall in terms of points? Do we think he's going to be coming in quite expensive, or do we actually think that he's going to fit in somewhere in the middle ground? If he's 18 points, 16 points, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Yeah. It'd still be worth taking. Yeah, arguably, I think we'll see him in the teens. Yeah. And I, I think it's one of those abilities as well, you know, people uh, people dread Dino when you can start modding their dice in games. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to guess he's going to come in as not enough points. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's fair. I think that's a fair point. So there we go, that's Count Dooku as the, uh, as the crew card. So who do we get next? We get his partner in crime, don't we? Yeah, General Grievous. Um, while you defend, after the neutralise results step, if there are two or more hits or crits results, you may spend a charge to cancel a hit or a crit result. He has one charge, however that, that charge recovers after a friendly ship is destroyed. I think it's worth pointing out it doesn't recharge naturally, it's only on the destruction of a friendly ship. Like, yeah, only when you really want to play alongside the, the big swarms of vulture fighters. Yeah. Oh wow, so that's, that's definitely where we're going to see him. Yeah, yeah. with a big swarm. Um, and just the ability to cancel crits um, every time something else is hit. I suspect... Again, in theory, he's really good. In practice, you're going to find people either kill this carrier first or all the other things. Yeah. They won't go a bit on the carrier, a bit on the other things. So I think in reality, he's less good than just the, what the paper suggests. Um, but still, not bad. Um, you know, he's a, a shield upgrade that could potentially recharge, yeah. basically. Yeah, a better shield upgrade in that sense. Yeah. Uh, and I guess again, it's a good time to sort of throw in that caveat that, of course, if he if he comes in at one or two points, then then of course it's very very good. But if it's coming in at yeah ten, yeah, then so many of these cards are going to depend on where they sit on the points curve. Yeah, of course they are. Of course they are. Uh, so after General Grievous, we move on to uh, some different options. What do we have there? Oh, well, we haven't explained how you get your pro droids into play yet, and you take them as a bomb option which is the uh, DRK-1 probe droids bomb. It is a unique upgrade with two charges. Uh, during the end phase, you may spend a charge to drop or launch one DRK-1 probe droid using a speed three template, and that's any speed three template. Uh, but you cannot recover the charges on this card, so you're only getting two per game maximum. Very, very interesting. What do you think about that, Tom? Yeah, I think, I mean, I must admit, I'm not overly excited about the droids, um, but, I suspect someone will find a decent use for them. Um, I hope they're not too expensive. I hope you can get a good few of them out there. Um, and there is there is some play in them. Um, I worry that they, they become a bit too expensive and actually you just want to buy more guns. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say give me that around the 10 points mark. I'm going to chuck a couple of pogoids out and really cause okay. you some problems. That's interesting, yeah. Okie dokie. So then we go to some of the force powers, some of the new force powers that are coming out. So yeah, I'm glad we... Uh, we get to finish on this uh, predictive shot. After you declare an attack, if the defender is in your bullseye arc, you may spend a force. If you do, during the roll defense dice step, the defender cannot roll more defense dice than the number of your hits and crits. That's really good. See, I think this is rather powerful. I think you're gonna... A lot of the game is about positioning and, and chipping away at things as we go. For that A wing that keeps getting the three dice while you get the two hits, to just keep taking an evade off it is really powerful. Yeah, very, and I think your powerful. ability to drop small chunks of damage here and there just astronomically goes up as their defense dice get dropped off for your hits. Admittedly, you have to be in your bullseye arc, but we've covered earlier the ability to get into your bullseye arc is now considerably increased. Um, yeah, I really like this upgrade. Um, I think it's well worth spending a few points on this um, to try and chip away at damage where you can. And what kind of pilots, based on what we've seen in this video and during this release, what kind of pilots do we think we're going to see this? Uh, I think this could comfortably go on any Jedi. Yeah. Um, just because I don't expect it to be too expensive um, because of the um, the caveat on when you can use it. Um, so therefore, I would recommend it on any Jedi 
um, where you've got the, the three points, or one of the higher PS infiltrators, sorry, higher initiative infiltrators, um, I think you could start to do a bit of work with this. Possibly consider sticking that on something like Darth Vader as well, where you can sneak that extra crit through quite reliably. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think, um, yeah, going back to some of the, there's no reason this has to be used within the factions, uh, back onto some of the older stuff, onto Vader. Yeah, I agree entirely. Yeah, I think we might see a little bit of that. Yeah, um, I think a lot of Force users are going to start looking at that quite heavily. Yeah. And you get a couple of those in that pack as well. Yeah. Uh, so a good opportunity as well, I guess, to round out the video, having a quick look at some of the quick build stuff, which is uh, which has been chucked out there for those guys out there who really love it. Um, so what options have we got on the Sith Infiltrator? So we've got two three-threat options, um, which bring you Chancellor Palpatine, Sidious, a shield upgrade and the Skimitter title on 066. And on the Dark Courier we got Dooku, Grievous, K2B4 and the Skimitter title. Um, looks pretty reasonable. Um, however, onto the slightly more standout stuff, we've got two four threat options. We've got Darth Maul with Hate, a HLC, a Perceptive Co-Pilot, the Skimitter Squadron... Oh, no. I'll start that bit again. So onto the four threat options, bit more bit more entertaining. We've got Hate, a HLC, a Perceptive Co-Pilot, the Probe Droids, the Shield Upgrade, and the Skimitter Tile. I think that is uh, really, really interesting. That's all on Maul, isn't all it? All on Darth Maul. And then on Count Dooku, we've got Brilliant Evasion and Perceptive Shot, which uh, is one of the ways that the rules are broken, which is quite nice. Uh, some Iron Torpedoes, a General Grievous, a Hull Upgrade, and the Skimitter Title again. Um, I'm excited for that just because brilliant shot, brilliant evasion and predictive shot on one ship. That looks pretty tasty. That's, quite fun. Yeah. That's one of the fun things about quick build, isn't it? The fact that you can get these combinations that you're not going to see in the extended or hyperspace format. Yeah. You know, so it is just real good quality fun. Yes. I think the standout note from these for me as well is that coming in at four threat, you can see where you can really build them up to be a really serious chunk of your list. With, with eight threat being the standard, they're going to be fifty percent. I don't know how that's going to reflect the points value entirely, but it tells me I can chuck all those upgrades on it and really make this thing meaty. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, on the flip side, something that we didn't speak about with the Delta 7 at the Sprite, we have their quick build. So what have we got there? Uh, you've got five options. So you've got your two threat options are the base Jedi Knight with a Delta 7B uh, configuration, uh, Ahsoka Tano with Battle Meditation and the R4P Astromech, or Barris Offi with Sense and an R2 Astromech. Or you can go for those little bit more tasty options with the three threat. You can take Luminara Unduli with Brilliant Evasion, R4P, Shield Upgrade, and Delta 7, and Anakin Skywalker with Supernatural Reflexes and Calibrated Laser Targeting. Wow. That just sounds fantastic. That sounds like something that you'd like to fly there, Tom. That might be your best three threat option um, with Supernatural Reflexes uh, representing 30 yard points itself. I think that's a fantastic choice. I think it's going to be really good. And again, looking at just to get a vague idea of where these might come in on the points, we're looking at two three threat options, a two threat option, that's three of them, so that tells me I'm going to look at maybe three of them in a list. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think that's where we're coming in. It's always a good idea to look to the quick builds for a couple of clues at least. Uh, so there we have it. Those are our Sith Taker unboxings for two of the new releases for Wave 3. I'm sure that we're going to be able to get a few more out there for you. And we hope you've enjoyed an in-depth discussion, not just about the cards and the ships, but also uh, the list that you might see these in as well and some of the tactics that might be employed. Uh, in conclusion, do you think that you're going to be going Separatist or Republic? I'm Republic all the way. Yeah, you want to get into that Anakin, don't you? I can do. Tell. How about yourself? I'm, I'm liking the look of both factions, to be honest. I love those Jedi fighters, but the temptation of a swarm of Vulture droids is really fun as well. Absolutely. So it would be interesting to hear in the comments below what you guys are looking forward to in this latest release, and of course new factions, which of course is very, very, very exciting. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you soon. Remember, you can support our channel by getting yourself in the comments, sharing it amongst your gaming clubs, and of course we do have the Sith Taker podcast, which you can check out, which is released on our Sith Taker Facebook page on a regular, regular basis. So Star Pilots, we look forward to flying some X-Wing with you very, very soon. Take care, guys.